Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on this week's show... A very exciting new bike from Transition. A long-awaited release from RockShox. As well as tech that could really unleash your true riding ability. And of course, all the brilliant stuff from you lot. And straight into news, and over to Henry. So this week in the news, we saw a bike that I, for one, I'm incredibly excited about it's the new transition spur and honestly I mean where do I send my kidney to I think it looks absolutely brilliant I think it's one of the first real cross-country bikes that has genuine enduro numbers we've seen cross-country bikes go slacker and slacker but I think this is possibly the first bike one of the first bikes I've seen where if you saw these numbers on a platform that was 160 mil, you wouldn't think twice, and that is pretty remarkable. So let's talk about the features to begin with. Well, if you look at their built specs, it tells you a lot about the bike. It comes with 2.4 inch XO tires, 180 mil dropper on the large, four piston brakes, 800 mil wide bars, and a 50 mil stem. Now the frame is of course full carbon fiber, and that is including the rocker link and they've got it down to a very svelte weight of 2.5 kilos for frame and shock by having pivotless chainstays. Now this is a system we've seen employed by quite a few brands now and it's becoming increasingly popular for short travel applications, not least those new specialized Epic Evo bikes from a few weeks ago. And basically it means you can really save on weight on the rear end because you don't have to think about bearings and all the associated um, engineering to fit them within the frame. The bike comes stock with a 45 mil stroke, which gives 120 mil travel, but you could reduce the stroke if you wanted to get that 100 mil travel number, which is kind of quite a popular amount of rear wheel travel for XC races. Similar to the Sentinel, actually, they talk a lot about that, you know, changing the stroke length. And I think it's great to see bikes or bike manufacturers on the front foot saying, this is how you can change the bike to, for your suited needs. And it isn't going to have, you know, the clearance issues with these stroke lengths and it's very clear and concise so the bike comes with a threaded bottom bracket and a head tube that could potentially accommodate an angle set headset so i think that that tells you a lot what you need to know now the reaches on the smallest size go from 425 all the way up to 510 and a large sit at a very healthy 480 mil chain stays kind of somewhere in the middle ground at 435 mil so it's plenty long enough if you do want something that's a bit more stable for your cross-country bike. It's got a 66 degree head tube angle paired to a 76 degree seat tube angle. So like I said, real progressive numbers. And I think if you saw the numbers and you didn't know the travel, you wouldn't assume it was an XE bike and that's for sure. Full builds start at 5,000 pounds or 5,000 US dollars for the GX build. Like I said, check out the pictures because the blue in particular looks absolutely breathtaking. Okay, next up in news is the brand new fork from RockShox and it's called the Zeb. Uh, this is it on screen. Take a look at that bad boy. So this thing has 38 millimeter stanchions. What a bruiser of a fork. Yeah, okay, so this one really is the new brute in that RockShox range. Now it's available in 27 half and 29 inch models and the travel is available from 160 up to 190. 190 millimeters of travel on a single crown fork. <laughs> this thing is absolutely ridiculous uh, in the best possible way. Imagine what you could do on that fork. Virtually a downhill race fork in a single crown format. Um, I'm blown away by what Rockstars have done with this fork. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of what they did back in sort of the mid 2000s, I forget the year to be honest, with the Totem. Now the Totem was a 40 millimeter stanchion fork, had coil springs, I think you get an air as well on there, and it had that massive 1.5 inch steerer tube. But the fork was just built like a house. You know, in fact, mine still looks like it does like uh, the day I got the thing. Um, this thing is absolutely indestructible, but it was a massive weight penalty that came with it. I mean, that was designed around bike parks. The Zeb though, that's a very different fork. In fact, its name is kind of telling and actually a better name than the Totem, to be fair. Um, a lot of people have said, oh, why don't they call it the Totem? But I actually think Zeb is better because it's named after Zebulon Pike. He's the guy that discovered or founded Pike's Peak. Also, 
the Brock's Pike is named after Pikes Peak as well. Um, and it's near in Colorado where their Colorado test and research facilities are based. So it's kind of a logical name and very telling with that incredibly rocky terrain, what the fork is designed for. Now on your screen now, you're gonna see some moving images from the Rock Sharks video they provided us with just to show you a bit of the fork in action because we don't actually have one here to show you. As you can see, it's pretty rowdy terrain. Now you would think that a fork with 190 mil travel. I can't say it without laughing. I think it's insane. I've been waxing lyrical about riding a bike with 120 mil travel on the front. This has got 190. I bet you could ride that literally into anything. Uh, zombie apocalypse fork right there, if you ever needed one. Anyhow, back on beat. Yeah, so they've basically stripped loads of weight out of the crown. It's very, very stiff. Uh, and out of those lower legs as well, because they don't want this thing to be a tank like the old Totem. They want it to be a really raceable fork is the whole point of it. Now this is something quite shocking as well. It's 21.5% stiffer than the previous long travel single crown fork, uh, which is the Lyric. And the Lyric, as we all know, that's not exactly a pair of wet noodles. That thing is really stiff and it's really good. Now to me, 21.5% stiffer sounds terrifying because there's no way I would be able to ride that fork hard enough to justify having a fork like that. But if you're a racer or if you're some kind of beast, that is the fork for you. That has got to be the new bad boy on the scene. The new bully has arrived. And I tell you, if you take that one into a rock garden, the rocks are gonna lose. Um, insane, this thing. So a few more shots of it on screen. Uh, yeah, like I said, available in 27 half and 29 inch models. There's five models in a range, starting with the uh, Zeb, then the Zeb Select, Select Plus, the Ultimate, and also the Dual Position Air. Now this is a bit of a secret weapon in the range. Cast yourself back to when RockShox used to do the two-step system, which later progressed into the dual position air, um, and they essentially brought it back in slightly revised format. Now this is really aimed at e-bikes, and I can see a huge benefit here for e-bikes wanting to climb technical terrain without locking their forks out. So what it does is you essentially turn the dial and you can compress the fork and it will lower down a certain amount into the travel. So the fork will still be fully active within that travel, but the front end of your bike is lower. So for climbing on steep stuff, that is a complete game changer, which with 190 mil travel on the front of a bike, you're gonna need. Um, I think it's a wicked piece of kit. Now inside is a new negative air spring, even bigger than what we saw previously uh, with that redesigned negative air spring we saw on the new Pike and on the new Lyric. Um, even plusher off the top, uh, which I guess you're gonna need if you're going to stuff that 190 mil travel really warrants. You're gonna need all the help you can get and it sounds like you have it on there. There's a Charger 2.1 damper as well, which is the best thing that they have ever made. It's absolutely phenomenal uh, damper. Anyone who's ridden the latest iteration of that Lyric will tell you how good that fork feels stunning piece of kit so this is just a bigger <laughs> version of it again some more shots on screen uh, yeah it comes with the plush maxima fluid in there the skf dampers uh, skf wiper seals even not damper um it's five mil longer axle to crown than the comparative size in the lyric so if you did want to upgrade or not upgrade to see upsize we should say that on on the bike um it's going to work absolutely fine up to a 2.8 inch tire on there as well now, interestingly, one last point I've just noticed here is if you look in the small print on the FAQs in their launch package, one of the things it says is it will also be available in a 1.8 inch steerer option. Ah, watch this space. I think the front ends of bikes are about to go off the charts. Now, like I said, I think the Zeb looks incredible, but it's probably not the fault for me. Um, I just don't think I could hold on to the thing in the sort of terrain that that wants to ride down. I reckon I'm probably a pike man, um, even opposed to the Lyric. What are you? Would you ride a pike? Would you ride a Lyric? Or would you ride that new Zeb? And um, if you did, what would you do on it? If you had the Zeb, would you jump it off a house? Would you ride it over? grannies and not filled with tins of cat food, what would you do on it? Let us know in those comments underneath. And next up, Henry's actually discovered something with the latest tech. Now this is this really specialist bit of footwear. Um, I'm gonna leave you with Henry on this one. Yes, that is right. So we've got some big tech news incoming. If the Zeb didn't quite set your world on fire and the transition didn't get your heart rate bouncing off its rev limiter, then this could be the answer the new Shimano SPD Anniversary Edition sandals. So we're talking a redesigned footbed with more room and security for your toes. We're talking navy blue looks, which I do think incidentally would pair up with that spur very well indeed, and adjustable Velcro straps to keep you secure no matter how loose it gets. They come with the two point cleat position, and my word, joking aside, 
it's a freedom you just don't get with other styles of footwear. And I've done a bit of riding in sandals. I wouldn't do anything too leery, but I think for a bit of touring and you want to, you know, top up the dodgy tan lines, bring it on, I reckon. I think they're absolutely brilliant. Now, what do you guys think? Should they be confined to history or are we ready for a second rendition of sandal life? I know which camp I'm in. Viva la sandal. Okay, next up in news, I want to tell you a little bit about Ride Wrap and Slick Graphics. Now, firstly, Slick Graphics. Um, this is a real shame from my point of view because I have in front of me here some custom graphics I had done for that Shimano Yeti bike build that's still hanging up over there winking at me. Um, I had these specially made for it and thank you so much to Owen at Slick Graphics for making these. They're the Fox 34 Stepcast graphics basically redone to match the frame in that Yeti Turk. They look insane, but unfortunately, just because of how crazy postal forces are, at the moment they just didn't get here in time with uh, COVID. It's kind of a bit of a problem for a lot of reasons. Um, and actually it stopped a few other parts that didn't make it onto the bike, but I will show you those in due course. But I wanted to give some props to, to Owen because the stuff they make over at Slick is incredible. Now, if you're not aware of them, get some screen flow on the screen at the moment. Now they make graphics for your regular forks. Maybe it's a pair of Fox 36, maybe it's a pair of RockShox Pike. Whatever they are, they can make those graphics in, dare I say, better quality than the originals on there because they're thicker. They're more like armor than they are actual graphics. Granted, they might not be quite sleek because of that, but they look way better because you can get them in any custom color orientation that you want. There's loads of stock ones on there and you can request custom color variations to match in with your preferences. If you want the finishing touches on a bike, now the stuff that these guys are doing is really cool. And it's not just restricted to frame graphics and the full graphics, they'll do other things as well. Like they'll do crank graphics for your Shimano XT cranks or whatever cranks you're having, and they can blend in like the ones you can see on screen, or they can be leery and color coordinated with your bike. It's a really nice way of giving a bit of life back to your bike. And actually, it's a great thing to do to your bike when you first get it because it protects it. But if your bike's looking a bit worse for wear, you can cover up a lot of that wear with some stuff from Slick. So definitely check out their stuff. Um, as you can see on screen now, here are the, the graphics for the fork I had made up. And look at them, they look so good. Um, I am going to clean the forks up and get them on there because I feel it's sacrilege to not include them on there. And I'll share some images of it before the bike has to sadly go back. <laughs> but also, these guys make amazing frame protection kits. So they do basic kits which can consist of stuff to go on the inside of your seat stays and chain stays, and a bit for your down tube and a little bit for your top tube, all the way through to complete custom tailored kits. There's a lot of other manufacturers out there that do them, but these ones are some of the toughest we've seen. They look really good. They come with a full selection of installation guides and kit. There's even dedicated cloths in here. As you can see the ride wrap one, that's incredibly soft. And there's also an entire pack here considering, uh, consisting even of all of the, the fluids and things that you need and complete with a squeegee, everything you need to install the kit onto your bike. Now, if you're buying a new bike or a new frame or a new fork at the moment, I couldn't re recommend this sort of stuff enough. You get this stuff on, you don't even know it's there and it completely protects it from scratches and scuffs. And I can tell you from having had a lot of nice bikes over the years, there's nothing worse than getting a big dirty cut or a gouge in a really annoying place that you just can't unsee. I mean, granted, getting scratches is part of the territory, but uh, you wanna protect it as long as possible, especially if your bike is carbon where you can take flakes of paint off and it can look pretty nasty afterwards. Anyhow, they do some amazing stuff, so check them out. That is Ride Wrap and Slick Art Graphics. Thanks, guys. So the last piece of news this week comes from New Zealand via a brand called Breakace. Now, in road cycling, the sport has been changed by the use of power meters, but could mountain biking see a similar transformation? Well, Breakace conducted a study and they found out that 96% of riders agreed that braking less would help them ride faster and have more fun. So they set about trying to include power meters to register our braking and then we could improve it. So what they do is they get data and they collect a huge amount of data about the way we use our brakes. Now obviously data is very useful but you've also got to be able to read it and understand it. So they also pair it with some software that helps cut through it all and boil it down to the need to know. 
So with their software, they break it down to key opportunities. Now these are places where the easiest place to remedy your braking technique and reap the biggest rewards. So they can talk about modulation, front rear ratio, heat management, brake time, the energy in kilojoules, average power, and of course, the amount of events or the amount of times you're on the brakes. And what that means is they can extrapolate a huge amount of data to then send you recommendations on the places of which you could be improving. Now, when you brake a bike, it does actually kind of not just slow you down, but it also moves your weight around. So it's not just a simple case of, oh, just get off them less or sharper. You know, it, it's, it's a very complicated thing. And they've actually managed to package it up with software to give you real recommendations. So I think it's pretty cool. Now, coming back to that point earlier on about people riding faster and having more fun, you know, you see so many crashes where people have you know, just grazed the front brake on entry and lost the front wheel or, you know, sliding out. And because when you're riding, obviously, as you get on the brakes, the mass is responding and weighting different parts of the bike. So I would argue actually to a beginner, it could actually make them a lot safer. So it's not just for racers, it's for everyone to get out riding and having more fun. And I would love to have a go on these one day. I think anything with telemetry is absolutely fantastic. And I think a power meter in the brakes is a really, really cool idea. And I mean, imagine if that was on the mountain biking World Cup circuit, the downhill and the enduro races, how tight and exciting it could make the racing. So good on your brake ace. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Okay, now it's quiz time. We are gonna ask you three tech related questions and hopefully you're gonna delve into the realms of knowledge that we've helped you with and I'm sure you get from all other cool pockets of the internet and you're gonna try and answer them. Now, the aim of this is to give you and arm you with the ultimate pub tech mountain bike knowledge so when you get back to the pubs of all your friends or whatever socializing you wanna do, you can outwit them with all that tech knowledge. So, first question coming up on screen right now. Now you might have seen earlier on that RockShox announced a new fork, single crown, a big burly thing with 38 mil stanchions. But what was the name of the other fork that they released previously that also had massive stanchion tubes on it? Any ideas? Okay, next question. Another Colorado brand, Yeti, are also huge players in mountain biking. But what does the SB stand for in their bicycle range? And the last question is we seen in relation to that RockShox story in news, Sam Hill as one of the test riders on that huge fork from RockShox. Now he was riding a nuke proof bike with Mavic wheels on it. But what brand was he riding before nuke proof? Okay, now it's time for Bike Cave. That is where you get to show us where you keep your bikes, where you lock them up at night, where you treat them to some TLC, where you repeatedly clean them to the inch of their life. Uh, whatever it is you do with your bikes, wherever you keep them, is it a sort of bike cave like mine? Is it a garden shed? Is it the back of your pickup truck? Wherever it is, we want to see them. Uh, the bottom of the screen is a link to our uploader. It's also in the description underneath this video, so you can click straight on it takes us through to the uploader. Uh, super easy to use, you click on your desktop, upload the images you want to, tell us a bit about them, a bit about yourself, about your bike cave, and we'll feature you on the show. Okay, so first up this week, this is an awesome one. I'm stoked, actually, I haven't done one of these for a while. Uh, this one's from Paul in uh, Holyoke, MA, USA. Uh, here's my bike cave in my garage at my house. Work in progress currently, but everything um, everything's running, needed to ride to keep the bikes running good. It's looking good, I tell you, very neat and tidy. So workbench, I guess, at the back, as you look at it, high shelving. I love doing high shelving, get stuff out of the way and manages to make the room look less cluttered down below. Good to see all your riding kit down the back. You kind of got like a built-in wardrobe thing there. Yeah, that's decent. I'm liking the pro sign at the back with a Fox, Giant, Gyro and Ride Concepts on there. Um, ride Every Day, that's one of the Ride Concepts monikers, isn't it? Love those guys, they make really cool shoes. Yeah, looking good. So you've got two sort of tool boards. So you've got one on the left, which looks like bike tools. You can see lots of park tools in there. You can see a mallet, just like my trusty one. Uh, we can also see loads of cool stuff at the back. So you've got some power tools. It looks like Ryobi and another brand. I um, don't know what it is, but you've got some DeWalt stuff down there. Lots of different stuff going on. Looking awesome, mate. Low, all the grease, in fact, at the back there. Got one of those little park rubber mats. You've got a little workshop stool. Looking rad. Yeah, I could spend a few hours there working on my bike. There's some more Ryobi tools there hung up. Blake likes his Ryobi stuff as well. Yeah, man, looking good. 
What else you got on those shelves? Picture of someone, is that your daughter perhaps? Um, loads of bike helmets on the shelf as well. Lots of hooks to hold things, store things when you come in from your ride. Ah, oh, there we go, and there's, there's the bike. Looking like you could work on it exactly where it is, in fact. That's a, that's a decent setup for storage and working on it. Nice, is that a Stanley compressor I can see down the bottom there? Very, very good, mate, yeah. Like it, another giant on the right-hand side as well. Awesome, rubber flooring as well, always good. Nice stuff, thanks for sending that one in. Next up, now this is great, Blake will like this one. Uh, this is a bike cave in progress. So this is from Jacob in Yeovil. Oh, it's UK, Yeovil, right. Um, still work in progress, a couple more paydays and I'll get the materials for the drawers, the runners, cupboard doors, and the drawer fronts. Looking awesome, you fully use that space nicely at the back there. Always good to see a build on the way. Something nice about it, isn't it, building stuff for yourself. Yeah, good work, mate. Nice. I like your external conduits with your PowerPoints and stuff there. Got to have PowerPoints on the worktop. Yes, looking good. Nice work, Jacob. Okay, next up is from Cade in Minnesota. Uh, I followed GMBM for a while now, and with the latest video, Blake, I decided to show what I've got. Not much, but it's functional enough for my bike and I. That's the point, isn't it? It's all about you. It's not about showing off anyone else. It's about showing what works for you. That is the ultimate. When you've got that right, you've got the perfect setup. Looking good, so that looks like a fairly new canyon. I'm guessing it's fairly new, you should kept the box, unless you're planning on flying somewhere. I guess you could use that as a bike box. That'd be a good bit of recycling. Nice work, mate. Yeah, looking good. Nice and tidy, nice pegboard on the back there. Awesome, even got a little shoe storage compartment. Very nice. Oh, well, uh, that's probably enough for this week. Um, I could keep on going all day about bike case. I absolutely love them. Um, of course, I built this one. I didn't just furnish it, I actually built the bricks, didn't build the bricks, I put the bricks up, I put the window in, put the roof on, all that stuff. Um, it was kind of a necessity rather than anything else, but um, it's actually given me a place that I'm able to work from at the moment, which is pretty lucky given the situation we're still in here in the UK and of course a lot of places elsewhere are. But uh, I hope you're all safe out there and I hope you've all got some cool bike cave stuff that you're busy taking photos off to send in to us because we want to see them. Uh, send them in, whatever they are, we will love them. Okay, now it's time for Rewind, and a little bit different from usual this week, I'm gonna show you a bike that I have behind me here that I've borrowed for another video. Um, Rewind is all about the old school mountain biking stuff. If you've got anything old school, we would love to see it, literally love to see it. There's a link at the bottom of the screen, so if you have anything old school, please get in touch with us. We wanna talk about it and we wanna see stuff. Also, you can ask us questions, so I'm gonna uh, provoke you to ask us some stuff, actually. Might lead to some cool videos. Now I had to borrow this bike from John Cannings, who used to work over on GCN. Uh, Cannings is a good friend of mine, a bit of a legend as well. Now this is his 1999 GT Shazang, so it's the titanium triple triangle frame. I've never actually seen one with the white frame before, I'd only ever seen the proper ball burnished finished ones. Um, I'd never seen the white one before until I borrowed it actually previously for a GMBM video where myself, Blake and Neil had to ride retro mountain bikes. Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Did you hear your ball? The link to that video is in the description. If you want to see me um, kick their asses, only because I knew how to ride a retro bike, um, check that video out. Now, this bike is insane, right? It's got a full original XTR M951 group set on it. That is my favorite iteration of the XTR group set, even more so than the original when it came out. This one in this gray just looks amazing. Eight speed, the triple chain set on the front. I actually borrowed this bike to do a video on how to set up a front derailleur because I don't have any bikes with front derailleurs on. So uh, Cannings kindly lent me this and that video uh, is out later this week in fact. Not everyone has a front mech, but it's an essential video for those that do. Anyhow, the bike is something of beauty. That titanium frame has a ride quality to it that you just can't get with other materials. Now, anyone here that's got a titanium frame or is lucky enough to have ridden one over the years, you'll know what I'm talking about. So still has an inherent kind of springy resilience to it. Alloy tends to be quite stiff, um, almost harsh if it's too stiff, whereas titanium is doesn't really have any of those feelings, right? It has a slight resilience to it that you can get from steel, 
but it has a slightly deadened feeling to it in a good way. It's so comfortable to ride for a frame that's got such a stiff design. It really, you need to ride these things to understand them. If you ever get a chance to ride a Thai hardtail, do it. Um, even if you're not a hardtail person, you'll be really surprised about the ride qualities. And in fact, I know Neil loves titanium as much as I do, and I think he's desperate to do a bike build. So if you've got any ideas for Neil on a titanium bike you'd like to see him build, uh, let us know in those comments actually, because I'm just interested to see what people think out there. Uh, I know that there's a certain brand beginning with M, ending with S that he's really into, but there's lots of cool stuff. So let us know about tie bikes in the comments. In the meantime, have a little oogle of this bike. Uh, Hand-built wheels, to XTR hubs, front and rear's got a Mavic. Uh, what's on the rear actually? It's a 221 on the rear, which uh, I guess you trashed the wheel at some point because at the front you've got one of Citrus uh, SUP. Uh, is it 217? Uh, no, 517 and in that Citrus finish, which look amazing. It's also got one of the original sets of the RockShox Sid Cross Country Fork in that Sid Blue. They look amazing. Gorgeous fork. And look at that Syncro stem up at the top there and those tiny little answer hyperlight bars. It's an awesome bike. I mean, secretly, I think Cannings wants to give me the bike. He won't, he won't do that, but, uh, but I would look after it if you did want to. Um, it's got one of the original Cell Italia Flight Titanium Sandals. Anyone who used to ride in the 90s will have ridden one at some point and they'll, they'll tell you how comfortable they got. Just when it got to that stage, when it started getting a bit worn, the saddle body just gives a bit, and those titanium rails give an extraordinary amount of comfort to the ride. They still are, I think, one of the best saddles that's ever existed. Um, pedals sadly aren't period pedals, but that doesn't really matter too much on the grand scheme of things. It did have a ropey old pair of Perish tires on it, which I quickly cut off the bike and got rid of those things. Uh, and I fitted this set of charged splashback tires, which look like a retro set of tires. Um, I actually gave Canning's Ease as a little gift for letting me use his bike. Um, they do look retro, they do look cool. I don't think you can get them anymore either. Um, I've just been squirreling stuff away and I had these um, up in the loft which I found, but I thought I'd appreciate, I thought you'd appreciate me showing you this bike because it's very cool, uh, very retro and very real as well. It's uh, all in one piece, it's been ridden. I'm gonna ride it again shortly for another video. And it's also got, I didn't say, it's got the classic XTR Parallelogram V-brakes on. They are absolutely gorgeous. Probably the best example of a set of V-brakes ever. I think beautiful. The pads move in that parallelogram motion so they don't arc in and can catch on the tire sidewalls or go under the rim, they're like doo -doo 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 really nice to use. Um, incidentally, while I've got this bike, if there's anything people want me to do on old tech, let me know. If there's anything you want me to do on maintaining stuff, i.e. setting up V-brakes, for example, or um, stripping down an old suspension fork if you've got some things a bit older, anything like that to do with not necessarily retro, but older style stuff. We would love to do some more stuff like that to help you guys out. So uh, let us know, or if you've got a friend that's struggling with something, let them know as well um, and get involved. See you next week. Hi guys, so this is my, well, rather new Canyon Strive. So I thought I'd give you a very quick rundown of what I've done to make this bike my own. So the first and most obvious thing is I fitted a coil shock, which I increased the stroke length to give it a bit more travel than advertised. I put an offset bushing in there to make it very slack indeed, because what I wanted this bike to be is not only great at bombing descents and the emphasis there, but also have the ability to winch back up, which it very much does, thanks to that slave unit on the shapeshifter. What that means is it has all the benefits of having a really burly coil setup, but one click of a button and it's a very efficient peddler, far more efficient than most coil trail bikes I've ridden. So it's also got a 170 mil travel fork to make it slacker still. So I've got the head angle down to about 65 degrees now, so amply slack. But because it's sitting deeper into its stroke, thanks to the change in the stroke length, it does ride even slacker still and definitely kind of the geometry chart doesn't really tell the full story thanks to its you know really firm pedaling platform the seat tube angle feels a lot steeper and once you get descending thanks to that shock it feels very stable indeed you might notice that i've got the stem flipped upside down and that's because as i've raised the fork travel up well i need to keep that front end down a bit especially because it's paired to a stock 30 mil bar 30 mil rise bar as standard so i think in future what we're tempted to do is go a little bit longer on the stem length maybe 50 mil maybe didn't have some 15 mil rise bars as well and that would be perfect because you might also notice i've got the the saddle slammed really far forward and that's because of those offset bushings that have really compromised my seat tube angle so what i wanted to do is claim some of that back but then it's really reduced my effective top tube 
so maybe a 10 mil longer stem and I think that could be just perfect. But riding it is an absolute pleasure to ride, especially with these uh, E13 wheels. The Mazda tyres, incredibly grippy, and it's now just such a, such a fun bike to just tear down anything at, and kind of technical single track is just um, so, so at home on. So now it is time for the quiz answers. So the first question. Rockshox released the 38mm diameter Zeb, but what was a fork they had previously with a single crown that was quite similar? What was it called and what diameter were the legs? It was of course the Totem, which used 40mm diameter legs, and as rumours swirled about the Zeb, there was a bit of speculation whether it could in fact be called the Totem. The next question about the another Colorado brand Yeti. Now Yeti call their bikes, for instance, the SB150. What does SB stand for? It stands for Superbike, of course. So they're setting their stools out early doors, good on them, the Superbike. Now the final question, which bike brand did the one and only Sam Hill ride for before Nuke Proof? It was, it was an iron horse. It was of course specialized. He rode for them in between the two, although perhaps didn't enjoy as much success as upon the iron horse or Nuke Proof. But that's it for this week's tech show. So thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Cheers guys.